Coming up, a pocket fixed carry blade as the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife this month. A great new way for me to carry a knife. It's very exciting. Even my daughters think it's cool. And then we're going to talk about the new Old Guard. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Had a couple of favorite comments uh, this this past week. First one uh, is from E.K. Cano Ficandriana. 7325. Um, I haven't figured out how to say that quite yet, but uh, X says, uh, the best in looks department out of three, this is talking about the Yojimbo, Yojumbo, Micro Jimbo, is the Yojumbo. Why didn't they just make a 100% Yojumbo shape into the fixed blade as the Ronin? Or the other option is the Ronin 1 design with longer overall dimensions in S35VN. Uh, this sounds like your knife at this point. Uh, the Ronin 1 is a masterpiece of Warncliffe fixed blade. Love that. I am sorry, Janich. The Ronin 2 is so ugly. Uh, first of all, I like that you um, have a strong opinion about it. I kind of agree, though, once you have it in hand and it's so thin and so purposeful, it is a, it is a really outstanding knife. But by comparison, to me, uh, the best looking of the bunch is the Yojimbo uh, right here. Uh, it to me that is by far it's even better looking than the yo jumbo even though i carry the yo jumbo i like the yo jumbo more but i i just have to applaud your your uh, the emotional content in your comment because uh, i get that way about certain knives like why do you have to do it like that but i have to say i love this ronin too nice and flat even this gigantic uh sheath the size of connecticut uh, works great. Uh, I keep intending to make a small one. N never have. This works fine. Uh, but thank you for that uh, comment. And then second comment, also uh, apropos to this shape, is from the great and powerful Dirk Pinkerton, who says, the Nova 2 and its little cousin, the contact folder. Love it. Okay, so he's talking about the Nova 2. This is coming out soon from myself and <clears throat> Hogtooth Knives. But he's he is referencing his design folder, the contact, one of my all time favorites. And you can see the obvious influence. So the Kiridashi shape here, here. So uh, the con uh, the um, the Nova two is really it's the contact meets the Hinderer Warncliffe in a bar. And uh, and they have a fantastic, wonderful, magical night and then never see each other again. And what happens is the Nova 2. So the Nova 2 sharries the, the tip configuration of the Warncliffe uh, Hinderer, probably my favorite Warncliffe out there. And then the uh, Nova 2 has that upward raking angle of that straight edge that the contact has. Contact also one of my absolute favorite folders, Warncliffe, whatever, whatever knife uh, out there. So definite. Um, I, I'm 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 happy that uh, Dirk saw the influence, and um, and I have to say, uh, in addition to those two knives, um, a, a spiritual influence is the Yojimbo. We were talking about that before. Kind of kind of that same tip angle that I like so much. Uh, so we'll throw that in there. But in terms of family resemblance, definitely these two, Dirk. Thank you so much for your designs. I am, you know, obviously pale in comparison and definitely took influence from your knife. Um, so thank you for all that you've done for us in terms of design, but also leading to this. Um, so very psyched about that. Thank you, sir, for commenting. And uh, it's always nice to know that um, people are watching, especially people that make the awesome, awesome knives that we have. All right, coming up, uh, we're going to take a look at some, well, some knife life news, some new things, and also the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway Knife. But first, let us do a pocket check. All 
I just mentioned the Hinderer XM24 Warncliffe. Well, in my pocket today, I had the XM24 Bowie, uh, probably my favorite folding Bowie shape out there. This and the um, Cold Steel Recon 1 Bowie are probably the two greatest out there. Uh, but I love this because it evokes that uh, Mac V Sog uh, shape with the, with the dual peaks there, but it has a nice long clip, which reminds me of like the Hell's Bells Bowie and other sort of fighting style Bowie knives. Excuse me. So this one, I don't carry as much anymore uh, because it is way pre triway pivot. And that's, that's not why I don't carry it. It's that lately I've been trending a little bit smaller in my front pocket carry. And this is a beefy gent, uh, but a total pleasure to have on me today. I remember when I bought this, uh, this was one that this is from the first generation, I think, of XM24 Bowies. Uh, and I was I had been looking for a long time, found it on the secondary market, and it was a, a pretty penny. Let me say that. So I needed some bolstering of spirit. So I looked to, to uh, people who already had it on YouTube. And I remember one guy, I don't remember who this guy was. I don't think he made too many videos, but he was showing off his XM24 bow and he said, it's a real man's knife. And I was like, man, you know, it sounds corny, but he's right. It is a real man's knife. So uh, that was all I needed to push me over the edge and send the 500 bucks or whatever it was uh, at the time, way more than I could afford to get this. Also along the way, and by, by the way, um, I do not recommend that, um, but I'm just putting my cards down on the table. I've made irresponsible choices. Uh, I'm happily in a position where I don't do that anymore, but you'll also notice far fewer knives coming through here. It's not like I'm buying tons of knives all the time. I think I've gotten a little more responsible and also, um, well, yeah, just a little bit more responsible. <laughs> Uh, but so here we have aftermarket scales. This was by RC Bladeworks, a guy who actually got sued by Rick Hinderer for making scales for his knives, which I got to say is exceedingly uncool. Uh, but Rick Hinderer has done so much in terms of design and forwarding the form that uh, I'll, I'll never hold too much against him. But got to say, you got to sue these guys. I don't know. Not so cool. But an Ohio boy, a firefighter, and a maker of great knives. All right, next up on me today, I had the Victorinox Tinker Dork Edition. Yes, that's right, Sasquatch. I am totally into Sasquatch. I have been for years at this point, love listening to the stories. I used to be big into ghosts, and then it was UFOs, and then uh, I've, I've roundly landed on Sasquatch because there are so many great stories by people who are out in the woods uh, all the time, hunters mostly, guys who definitely don't want to admit they've seen something weird in the woods. So when I saw that this was on offer at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, I went for it. Uh, something I love about the Tinker is the secondary pen blade. You can always leave that sharp, always ready, uh, ready to go. <clears throat> Pardon me. But that main blade, you can go to town on. Here we have a uh, the the usual bottle opener, etc. I have been using this a lot recently. Uh, and I'm not talking about the can opener. I'm talking about the tip, which works great for most mm, Phillips screws. So I've been using this for the chi Chicago screws on various knives. I've been changing the clips around on, and it's been, it's been working awesome. I'm going to turn up the light a bit on, on this. Oh, oh. I went from cool to warm light, and uh, but that freaked out the camera. All right, so let's see. Next up on me, I had, of course, what I was talking about before, the Hogtooth and Bob DeMarco Knife Junkie Nova 2, follow-up of the Nova 1, obviously. And uh, this is that Kiridashi shape with that upward raked straight edge that we saw on the asymmetrical contact and that we see on Kiridashi's. And then you have that very acute point and uh, tight angle there at tip. It's a little less than 30 degrees. Uh, I guess it's 29.78. Uh, I'm just kidding about that. Uh, 
but that's up front for the thrusting and uh, that's pretty much like i said lifted from the other um well, hinderer xm24 warren cliff and then lastly on me i had this so this is the dick pick from wingard wearables and I have to say, I have I have I have had this, and then I had the micro dick pick, which I have dropped off uh, with Jim. Jim, it's on your desk at work. Very, very, very uh, subtly disguised, but you'll see it in an inner office memo. Uh, but I find that the micro is probably easier to carry. I love this thing. I would love to have this on me at all times uh, in a zombie apocalypse. You can dispatch zombies with this all day long in the various grips. Uh, this is my favorite right here, hammer fist. And then you can use this front prying part to punch with. And then you have this to hammer fist with a nice big spike. The way Zach describes it, a spike and this kind of tool is, yes, you can use it defensively, obviously, but it is meant to be an extension of your finger. It's a scraper. It's a poker. It's a gouger. It's a, poker you know and here with this bottom part that rests so nicely against the palm it also works great for prying motions think the claw on a hammer or uh, that kind of thing but this tip let's see if i can get that to focus that tip is quite sharp so that's the one thing that has required me to figure out how to carry it best and i think the best way for me to carry this is appendix with this coming down over the belt um and that that way i'm not finding myself dragging my arm across it in normal motions um risking tearing my skin or gouging it with that pry bar so i would have to say the micro for me would be best just for in the pocket carry all the time and then there's this one, and then there's the Magnum. It's big, and that would be something that I would imagine a soldier would want to carry, especially someone who breaches car doors or smashes things and pries things open and then might have to stab someone in the process. Uh, that that uh, Magnum dick pic is pretty awesome. Uh, but all around, I got to say, this one right here is the is the good to go. But if you want to drop it in the pocket, check out the micro uh wingard wearables they they always have drops they're kind of always making and remaking um their products and they're made in pennsylvania here's a here's a birth card basically describing the the micro dick pic jim this one's yours i'll get this off to you um and so there you go that's what i had on me what did you have on you please drop it in the comments below. I had the Hinderer XM24 Bowie, I'm saying today, because I'm a Yank. Uh, I had the Bigfoot SMWK Tinkerer, and I had the Nova 2, and I had the Dick Pick, the major, the main size, not the major size. That one you want to watch out for. All right, next up, I want to talk about another great knife that we're going to be giving away. And actually, uh, the maker slash designer is going to be giving it away on Thursday Night Knives, uh, May 16th. Thursday, May 16th. We always do a giveaway for the Gentleman Junkies. Those are the uh, high-tier Patreon members on the third Thursday of the month. This month, May 2024, that lands on the 16th. Chaz Fisher of Fisher Blade Company will be joining us to give this package away. Um, here it is. Here's the package. Fisher Blades, figure it out. That's one of their uh, taglines. So here's the knife. And then it comes with a constitution. comes with a Band-Aid, a sticker, a sort of birth card that describes the knife who designed it, who sharpened it, who inspected it, what the um, uh, HRC is, 60 to 62 of that AEBL. And then it's got a, a little manual on how to use it, i.e. How, e., how to carry the knife. And if you're wondering what the knife is, this is my version of it. I don't want to unwrap the one I'll be giving away, but this is the knife. It's a pocket-carried fixed blade intended for self-defense. Of course, you can use it for EDC, and it works great for that. But the real main business of this knife is to carry for self-defense. So in it also comes some jacks, jack links, 
uh, what do you call it? Um, beef jerky to keep you strong and virile. And uh, so that you can use the knife, you have a, a, a manual that shows you how to carry it and where to thrust it. So a very nice package coming through here. I think this has a retail value of $300. So uh, if you want to get in on this, become a gentleman junkie. That's the knife junkie.com slash Patreon. Wow. Look at how seamlessly we moved into this liner. Uh, but yeah, it's true. If you want to get that knife for 10 bucks, uh, join the knife junkie.com slash uh, Patreon. And you have a chance to do that. You can also scan the code there. Um, sometimes we have uh, very special giveaways like this one and people join up just for that month. And I'm not, necessarily recommending that but i'm not poo-pooing it either i mean what who am i i can't tell you what to do with your money but if you want to try and get this for uh cheap go for it uh also dcc carry pocket clip there and it's canted in such a way so that when this is in your jeans pocket and the jeans pockets you know kind of go straight across as opposed to khakis which slant oops sorry about that when this is in your jean pocket, uh, that clip is canted ever so slightly, as is the blade handle, so that if you're folded in half because some dude has wrestled you to the ground, uh, you can still extract this from your pocket. So a, a purposeful slant there on the clip and on the handle. So check that out. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to check out uh, four new knives out there in the world that... Uh, some of you might be interested in. I know I am. So uh, stand by and check it out. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Chris Reeves Small Sabenza 31 is in stock while supplies last. This iconic frame lock has a sandblasted titanium handle with their drop point magna cut blade. This Crew Carta Para 3 features the combination of crew wear tool steel and matte finished micarta scales on this popular EDC. And a backup blade needs to be easy to carry and deploy, and the RMJ Tactical Backup Blade perfectly fits that role. The textured G10 handle securely indexes itself in the hand and allows you to quickly draw the blade from the Kydex sheath. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. That's theknifejunkie.com slash knives ship free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Knives Ship Free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. One month and one day until Blade Show. If you're listening to this on the day it drops, I'm so excited. Have my tickets, have my hotel. I'm staying in the place I want to stay again this year. The price has gone up a little bit, but what hasn't? Uh, what price hasn't gone up? What's going to happen at Blade Show? Lots of stuff. But one thing that's very exciting is this first story. The Cutlery Hall of Fame will be inducting three new members, uh, one of whom has been on this show, who is whose work I love and I praise uh, on the regular. And uh, that would be Mr. William Harsey Jr. Uh, he will be inducted into the Cutlery Hall of Fame. He's a major contributor to both custom and production military tactical style knives. I mean, he started off with CRKT, and uh, that was with the Pacific and the Green Beret uh, knives. Those things were so cool. And uh, if anyone, had, and, and I think there's even one more in that uh, in that CRK lineup, but there's one that the full Tang model, I would, oh man, I would love to have that. Uh, but anyway, um, most recently, Spartan Blades has been his biggest, uh, all the knives he's done for them. Uh, but along the way, Gerber, all, all sorts of companies he did stuff for. Uh, next up, TM uh, Dowell. Uh, he died in 2012. May he rest in peace. But he was part of the major, uh, all of the major knife developments in the, in the 20th century. And then in 1970, just a year before uh, this knife podcaster was born, he founded the Knife Makers Guild with Bob Loveless. Bob Loveless, the guy I'm always mentioning because of his awesome black bear. That's the subhilt uh, fighting design. I just love that. But also he did the New York undercover and um, uh, the shoot knife and various other things. Uh, Bob Loveless, of course, will go down to history. Uh, and TM Dowell started 
the Knife Makers Guild with him. Don Fogg is the last one. Custom blade knife um, maker, hugely known in that, but also for his swords and his Damascus making and um, teaching the craft to future forgers. Like that's something that we hear from everyone here who comes on the show. Uh, makers, designers, they always talk about the generosity of their peers and how they give away secrets or techniques or ways to think about going about design that you just do not see in other industries. So three luminaries, Bill Harsey, TM Dowell, and Don Fogg being inducted into the Cutlery Hall of Fame at Blade Show. Uh, so I, I hope to uh, meet Bill Harsey in person. And then, of course, it'd be great to meet the others as well. All right, next up from the Bull Brothers, uh, Gareth Bull, Bull Knives out of South Africa. Uh, this is a cool one. I mean, he's known for the Shamwari and the Mura. To me, the Mura is absolutely beautiful. Um, the Mura is incidentally a, a, a very ferocious breed of fighting bull out of Spain. I only know that because as a 12-year-old dork, I was into Lamborghinis. Uh, but uh, the, the Bull Brothers have a new one that they're coming out with, and it's actually a production version of their um, custom mini Zyro. And I was just talking to Jim before we started rolling. I think that is a beautiful knife. Uh, stem to stern, an absolutely gorgeous knife. And I'm just thrilled that it's only three inches long and it's not beckoning to me uh, because it's a little too small for my personal taste. But I just think it's gorgeous. Uh, this is a production knife from the Bull Brothers, uh, Gareth and Jason, uh, by Riot. So you also know that if you're into this and this is something you're going to spend money on, it will be outstandingly built. Three inches, M390. Uh, blade steel front flipper, which is uh, the the uh, the bull knives sort of preferred way to open. Uh, they've really uh, leaned into that, if you will. And also there's that finger notch there on the side for slow roll or middle finger flip. Uh, that's a tie liner lock frame. And then you've got uh, carbon fiber over it. Only 2.5 ounces. Um, this is not available yet, but when it will be, it will all be through their website. So if you want to order this thing, uh, get I, I'm sure they have a mailing list, but uh, kind of visit the Bull Knives website and keep your eyes peeled for the drop because uh, that's the only place you're going to find it. All right, next up, Giant Mouse. The company with the two Danes, uh, Jesper Voxnes and uh, Mr. Anzo, uh, Jens Anzo, they have a new one. It's an old one, but it's the third variant of a classic, and that's the GMF-2, uh, and that's uh, Giant Mouse uh, 2 there. But this is their third iteration of this fixed blade knife, very nice outdoors knife that's inspired by traditional Danish style knives. Uh, the first one had way more of a um, Scandinavian style grind. It was a, it was a low... Um, it, it kind of mocked a Scandi grind. It was a low, what do you call it? Um, saber grind. Uh, they've raised that grind up quite a bit now over the last two iterations. And uh, so now we have a high saber grind, which is going to be super chock full of utility. That's N690 blade uh, steel and that gorgeous deep red maroon G10. That is G10, not the usual micarta that we see from Giant Mouse. And you know what's kind of interesting? I think that unless you're willing to find very expensive micarta and then polish the hell out of it, um, to get a rich color like this, you might have to go to G10 because of all of the epoxy and the space between the fibers in a, um, in a micarta. On the Nova 2, we had a, a deep, rich um uh, maroon micarta, but it was a very, very tight weave linen, which is, you know, it's not when you're, when you're dealing with steel, it's not that difficult to deal with, but it's uh, more difficult than canvas. It, it takes more uh, belts and stuff like that. So uh, G10 seems to be a great option when you want really saturated color. Uh, so this one, only 300 of them, they're available now. So jump on it if you're into it. All right. Last up is from James Brand. Uh, James Brand has some cool new keychain and and small you know fifth pocket tool knives. Two of them coming out. They're called the Ellis and the Elko. Um, cool. The cool thing about this, uh, this is the Ellis here that we're seeing on screen, and this is basically 
uh, the same configuration as an SD Classic minus the uh, scale tools, i.e. the tweezers and the toothpick. And this one adds a little wire clip. So this has the scissors, a main blade, and then a pry bar, little pry bar screwdriver thing. Uh, hopefully that has a nail file on it. I'm not sure. But the really interesting uh, uh, thing about this is the eco acetate uh, that they're using on that. Um, James Brand is known to collaborate with companies uh, adjacent to or completely outside of the knife and EDC realm. Uh, in this case, Otis Eyewear. And this is an acetate that they use on their sunglasses. And I got to say, I, I think it's beautiful. You know me. I love, I don't have any around me. I love tortoiseshell. And this is sort of a, and I love coffee. This is sort of a coffee with cream tortoiseshell. That's just, it, it's sumptuous and beautiful, I got to say. Uh, so I like this collaboration quite a bit. Um, it resonates with me. Um, white, let's see, they're calling it white coffee tortoiseshell. So, yeah, very interesting. The smaller one um, that we also saw attached to the keys has a blade and the pry bar. I think that's it. No, no scissors on that. So some cool stuff coming from the James brand. Always, you know, I could see some stylish dude or dudette living in the city carrying this on them, um, you know, and they don't care about knives, but they're like, you know, I need a little thing, but I don't want to just get the thing I can get at REI. What's what's the little thing that I can put in my pocket around my keychains that's like a step above and they find this um i think it's cool i love it and i have to say i was won over by the twofold coffee and tortoiseshell covers uh, that's right okay so coming up we're going to take a look at the state of the collection uh but before we do be sure to like comment subscribe you can also uh, download the show to your favorite podcast app uh, that way you can listen on the go listen about knives what it's crazy, but it's true. You can do that. Um, and you can do that on all of these apps right here. So uh, check that out. And uh, for anything else, just go to the knifejunkie.com and check out the website. Jim well, works his butt off on it and does a great job. And everything Knife Junkie related is there. So uh, coming up, the state of the collection. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion. Featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. The KnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. This week I got something I have always wanted well ever since i first saw it uh, i don't know if you see anything different my daughters do that all the time dad you see anything different see anything different well do you see anything different maybe you see this look at how cool that is okay so this is the bastinelli uh shoulder rig and it's produced by a guy down in florida and i unfortunately I did not write down his name, but this is a Bastinelli knives thing. You can get this on the website or uh, I got this on Amazon, frankly, and it came from the Bastinelli store. But what is it? It's a shoulder rig uh, that you can attach your favorite knives to. Uh, I do recommend a light knife here. I have the station nine sear and it's it goes great. What it is, is uh, it's this one piece leather. Um, it's a one, it's one long piece of leather here. And then it's got the grommets that attach so you can size it. And then beneath that, uh, under the arm hangs a flat panel of leather with a whole bunch of, uh, holes sewn in it. So that with Chicago screws, you can mount any sort of knife to that little leather plate, uh, that has grommet holes. And then you have a knife hanging under your, under your jacket or whatever. And the cool thing about this, the way it's the way it's set up, is that it's tip up, obviously, edge behind you, so that if you want it in a standard grip, you just go like this. It's kind of like the cavalry uh, cavalry draw for pistols. Uh, when when U.S. cavalrymen were riding their horses, and they had their pistols over here, but they had the butt, they had the handle forward, and they would reach it like this. It's easier to grab the gun like this and draw it than it is to pull it out. If it's uh, mounted how we ordinarily think of it, you got to reach 
way up with it once you grab the handle and then bring it on your target. If you go like this, it's a quicker draw. Same concept here with this shoulder thing. So if I want it in standard grip, I'll just tug it out like that, put the back of my hand against my ribs, grasp around the knife, draw it out, and I have it. If I want to go in a um, reverse grip, just pull it down, and there it is. All right, have I carried it yet? No, I almost took it to Trader Joe's with me yesterday. And then I was like, all right, calm down. Um, I, I didn't, uh, I think it's great. I think that this uh, Sear number eight from Station 9 is just a little too heavy. Uh, maybe this is a great excuse to get a, sorry about that, Bastinelli Red fixed blade knife or or one of the Bastinelli knives that are, they're svelte, they're light, they're thin, I think, because that's the one thing. This is not that heavy, but it's just heavy enough that, you know, after a while, and there's no, there's nothing anchoring it to your belt on either side. So it's not pulling, it's not evening out in that way. So, uh, but I'm liking it so far, and I, I think I got to figure out the right knife for it. Um, but in the meantime, this certainly will do. Uh, so that's that is the state of the collection this week um and so what we talk about here what we're talking about here is a classic way to carry the knife the shoulder rig the shoulder holster uh if you ever saw the movie the highest art with peter coyote and that french dude who's so cool uh about knife fighting and the underground knife fighting circuit if you haven't seen that you gotta check it out but uh he carries a randall made knife in a in a sling kind of like this and it's just cool. I mean, you know, it taps into the 12 year old boy in me. So uh, we're talking about classics in that way. But there are other classics and there are major classics of the folding world. Um, and I sometimes call them the triumvirate, uh, you know, the royal triumvirate. And they are the Rick Hinderer XM 18, the Strider Knives SMF in my case, or sometimes the SNG, the smaller version. And then the Chris Reeve Knives Sabenza, in this case, the 21. And I, I, would I would venture to say, in all cases, the 21. I've not had the 31, but in terms of classics, it's the 21. So this is kind of that um, royal triumvirate, I'll say it again. And, and if you're a younger viewer, this might seem like, really? Is that, those are just kind of like, older knives um but at one time these were these were the three most coveted out there um and so this list coming up this is the old guard the old old guard and now i'm going to show you what i think is the new old guard so you always have to have an old guard you know the ones against which everything new is measured um even if it's a new knife uh, these all these old knives here, or I should say the old, old guard here. I still measure stuff against these knives, um, especially anything with washers, for instance. Uh, but these new knives, the new old guard I'm about to show you are the knives against which all the new things that come out should be measured. All right. You get the idea. First up is a classic, a, a modern, a, like a new classic along the lines of the ones I just showed you. And uh, that is the Harsey folder uh, by Spartan Blades. The Spartan Harsey folder, uh, of course, designed by William Harsey Jr. I was just talking about, just inducted into the Cutlery Hall of Fame. Uh, this one has a classic feel to it because it's heavy. Not, uh, not unduly heavy for the size, uh, but it's solid slabs of titanium with no weight reduction. Um, very very solid hydraulic action on uh, bronze washers so it's kind of old school in that way um, but new school in that it's a newish design compared to the others and it has quickly become a classic uh, this is a knife that is on most lists for you know best all time uh, especially when it comes to uh, what are you saying hard use folders here so and what i mean by that look at those thick slabs of titanium and then look at those gigantic squat uh, standoffs there you could run this thing over with a tank 
and I'm betting it would survive uh, due to its size and stoutness. So that's the Spartan Harzi folder. In this case, S35VN. I know now they're made in S45, and who knows? At this point, it's probably Magna Cut. Okay, next up is the AD15 from Cold Steel. Uh, I say from Cold Steel and not from Demco Knives because uh, the AD15 from Demco Knives is way out of reach, very difficult to get, and not being made anymore. The AD15, like most Demco designs uh, that are being sold under Demco Knives, was a... Well, actually, I'm sorry. I take that back. Like many... Um, cold steel Demco designs. This started life as a um, all right third revision. This started life as a custom knife, very very coveted, uh, but hard to get. Didn't make that many of them, relatively speaking, until Cold Steel licensed the design. So now, if you want the design, you got to get it from Cold Steel. All right, that was hard to say. <laughs> there you go. Or you have to find an older one on the secondary market. Good luck to you, and then good luck to you affording it also. But this features the Scorpion Lock, another one of um, Andrew Demko's innovations in terms of lock. He, of course, designed the famed Triad Lock, uh, but a couple of others as well. In this case, the Scorpion Lock is one of his most fidgety. Uh, you'll see his other lock, the Shark Lock, in this list as well. Uh, but this one is great to fidget with because of that whole bar, this whole, in this case, aluminum uh, on the uh, customs, it's titanium, but this lifts up to unlock the lock. So your hand and your squeeze pressure keeps it closed, but also the tremendous pressure of the down downward force of this bar with that little notch on the stop pin there. So all you got to do is lift that up and you can flip it in. This came out at the same time as the AD10, a very, very, very sensible, awesome working knife. And at the time I said AD10 to wed, AD15 to bed, because it's so exciting. <laughs> it is an exciting design, I, I got to say, and it feels so good in hand. All right, now I'm going to put it away. All right, next up, this is an absolute modern classic, a collaboration between Borka Blades and Microtech, and that is the Stitch. The Microtech Stitch, in this case with the Ramlock, really rams the whole point home because the Ramlock is stupendous. It is a really good lock. Uh, I, I've heard people, oh, are there, are there problems with it? Will it? I think maybe someone got one to close once uh, by spine whacking it uh, obsessively, but... If that is the case, and I haven't found that yet, uh, Microtech made up for the problem, and uh, they are known for their robust builds, and this is definitely one of them. Fluted aluminum handles. This comes in aluminum or G10, no price difference. I, I uh, chose the aluminum on this one because I had already had jocks from Jocks Knives in hand and loved it so much that uh, I went for this. And plus, Microtech, aluminum. You know, they kind of go together. Uh, but that ram lock is like a like an axis lock, like a bar lock, at least in terms of its interface. You pull these two tabs back or one. It's so solid. You could just do one without any misalignment at all. Um, and it releases. But the great thing is you never have to worry about uh, Omega Springs punking out on you because you have a uh, bar here. Let me blow the dust out. You got a bar there with a coil spring on it. And that, um, that is what captures and springs out that giant block of metal. It's not a bar lock. It's like a giant block of metal lock is what I'm going to call it. Uh, this knife, of course, has the M390 and the great uh, serrations. This one I was using a lot yesterday. Uh, you can see some track marks on it. No, track marks, that's... Something else, I guess. But you can see where it was going through cardboard yesterday. This is a great knife. I love it. And it seems to be, uh, in terms of Microtech, a new, um, a, a classic for them. Uh, the, the Microtech stitch here. Love that knife. All right, what's next? 
let's get to Ritter Hogue. Okay, so the Ritter Griptilians made by um, Benchmade eventually uh, went away when Benchmade stopped doing OEM work, and then uh, Doug Ritter landed at Hogue. Couldn't have asked for a better place to land, and they have been making his RSK Mark I. That's Ritter Survival Knife Mark I. The whole um, sort of ethos behind the Ritter Survival Knife, whether it was uh, the Ritter Grip being made by Benchmade or now, now this one being made by Hogue, is super steel, like amazing blade in a manageably, um, what do you call it, uh, budget-minded handle. So the real star of the show in a Ritter knife is the blade and the blade steel. Early on, he adopted S30V. I keep press. That's the one thing about this knife, that safety lock. I'll find myself pressing that. Anyway, uh, when he first started with Benchmade, it was he insisted on the S30V blade steel. That was the cream of the crop at the time. And then the rest of it was FRN. So the FRN griptilian handle reduced cost, but that amazing um s30v blade in his blade shape looks mostly like this high high saber grind um drop point blade similar to but different from uh the griptilian so uh i think in my estimation this in all of its iterations this is the auto version as as you've seen uh but this has an a manual version that's the main version. It's got small versions. It's got a larger fixed blade version. Uh, so this is has become a ubiquitous knife. And, and not just because people like the variation, but it's because it's an outstanding blade design. And it's been made by two great companies uh, in the past. You know, one great company in the past and now uh, Hogue. And if you ask me, I think Hogue does it even better. Um, so that is the RSK Mark one from Ritter, Doug Ritter and Hogue. Ah, excuse me. Next up, this is a, a newish one. This is the model two from American blade works. Uh, a lot of people might like the model one if they're going to put it in this list. And I love the model one. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but that went through uh, a lot of growing pains and different iterations to get to. And by the time, Michael Miller of American Blade Works got to designing and making the model too. He knew what was up and <laughs> he, he didn't have to go through all those iterations. This is an outstanding cutter. Uh, first of all, he, his, his blade grind, uh, the, uh, the bevel grind is super thin. It's really sharp. This was my first, uh, magna cut blade. And I associated the sharpness of this blade with the steel type. And I know that's not, you know, that's not proper. Uh, but now I associate Magna Cut with, with especially sharp blades because of this. Uh, but really, that's thanks to Michael Miller and his designing and making of knives. That, like, that's why this is so sharp. This could be in 440C and it'd be super sharp. I'm glad it's not. Uh, but that's a more of a testament to the knife making design and making than it is the steel in this case. Uh, but also a gorgeous handle, Michael Martin. what did I say? Michael Miller. I'm sorry. I meant Michael Martin of American blade works. Michael Miller is uh, tactile knife works. A lot of names rattling around in this old head. Uh, but when you look at this knife, it also strikes me as absolutely gorgeous closed. It is one of those knives where, you know, most knives, I just don't pay attention to closed and some, um, sing out to me, and this does. Uh, it has a very Art Deco design to me. It looks reminds me of the Chrysler Building in New York or uh, the Empire State Building. It has some real classic American lines to it, and it's a great cutter. And made by one man, Michael Martin, not Michael Miller, Michael Martin <laughs> at American Blade Works. And uh, sorry, Michael, and both of you, and uh, is just awesome to carry and use. So this is definitely a new old guard knife. Okay, next up, uh, I was talking about its cousins earlier, uh, but to me, this is a new old guard knife, and that's the Yojumbo. A lot of you might say, yeah, but no, it's the Yojimbo 2 that should be in this list because it's way more common, has been around longer, is used more. But to me, 
the 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 old guard had all all had uh, blades close to four inches or at least over three and a half inches. So that's kind of how I'm managing this list here. So yes, you could put the um, Yojimbo in there, um, I guess. But to me, it's the Yojumbo. This one slightly altered in that that mid mid um, finger partition. I ground down. I don't care for that too much, uh, though. I left it on my uh, sax, my Emerson sax. Here it works great without it. Uh, but I left this little hump just to bookend my fist uh, when it's gripped around this. This is such a great knife. Great blade design by Michael Janich. Uh, you've got that perfect tip angle there for thrusting, but also um, pull cuts and utility cuts. And then it's all that big four inch blade wide also is all on a very fidgety compression lock. So this thing is not only a pleasure to use, but it's a pleasure to manipulate and a pleasure to, uh, you know, to enjoy for the non-cutting things. Uh, S30V, as they do on all of their, you know, first runs of anything, basically, S30V and hollow ground. I love the hollow grind on this knife and on the Yojimbo. The Micro Jimbo is so small, they went with a uh, uh, Michael... Janich went with a flat grind and that seems apropos in that in that case too so huge fan of this line even the ugly ronin no i don't find it ugly but i totally get it and uh see this is why i keep fidget uh, this is why i want a lighter knife it keeps pulling down uh but yeah taste you can't account there's no accounting for taste as they say okay another modern classic this one all about china this is the riat k2 i absolutely love this knife and to me it really represents riat i know it's an older knife at this point uh, but it's the one that really um after i had the um uh what was it the the horizon d and or no the horizon c and got rid of it and then i saw this and to me this represents what a company like Riot or the company Riot can do and does on the regular. It is just perfect. And this one is an in-house design. It has one of my very, very, very favorite uh, Tonto blades ever. Let me bring this up close. That nice long swedge and the flat that comes down the center. Deep hollow grind here. A flat front, an upswept tip. The handle fits great. Oh, it fits so well. And when I got this, I wanted the blue one that evoked the handle of a katana, but I'm so glad they didn't have that. And I was forced to get this bronze sort of dragon skin because I've really fallen in love with it. And think the other one now, by comparison, is a little bit cheesy. Uh, Knife Joker, uh, a website out there that has a lot of exclusive runs of great knives, has done a lot of exclusives of this model in particular, the Riot k2 when this came out there was a k1 through k4 uh but <clears throat> pardon me it seems the k2 is the one that really endured uh, as people still seek these out and companies like knife joker was doing all their exclusives look at that blade grind yeah riot knives i have a couple of knives made by them but uh this one to me just takes the cake Next up is a zero tolerance, a knife we don't, a company we don't hear too much from uh, these days, unless they're rehashing an old design. But I think they reached their apotheosis with this one. It's a fancy word, and I'm not even sure if I'm using it right. Let's say, let's say they hit their pinnacle with this one. Uh, this is an Ernest Emerson design from his early days. Uh, this is oh, so smooth on, on. Um, uh, bronze washers. You've just got a classic long clip point and a handle that is very neutral but fits the hand great. Uh, it flares out towards the ricasso so as to stop your hand from going up onto the blade and a thrust. Um, has that nice curve down here to nestle into the palm. Just an outstanding all around knife. This is one of the ones uh, that has made, built a lot of bridges. A lot of non-Emerson guys love this knife. A lot of non-ZT guys love this knife. This is just a 
you know, this is one of the ones I, I might carry if I decide not to carry a Sabenza, for instance. It's sort of neutral, but just incredibly awesome. I wish Zero Tolerance would do more of this again. I know they hear that all the time. They don't need me uh, nagging them about it. Uh, 20 CV blade steel. This is the 0640 ZT Emerson. Love this one. All right. Second to last is made in Massachusetts, and it's the TRM Atom, the Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. This one with the black blade, so, so sweet. 20 CV blade steel. Uh, this is actually a factory second that was sent to me uh, by Marianne from Three Rivers. Uh, three rivers manufacturing excuse me i had one with the satin blade and she sent me this one and i just didn't need two of them so i got i sold the other one and held on to the one she sent me and it's so funny that this is a second the only reason this is a factory second is that little there's a little mark right there right at the plunge grind not to be mistaken with that little dab of oil there that little mark there caused this to be a second. This is an outstanding knife. Very thin, uh, very slicey cutter. Uh, the, the knife overall is thin and light and svelte. And then, of course, uh, one of the USPs about this knife is the fact that you can swap the scales out without taking the whole damn thing apart. Uh, all you got to do is remove these two screws. Boop, boop. And it comes right off the pivot. And on this side, you have to remove the two clip screws and then that forward screw. So five screws and you have, you know, in less than, you know, like in three minutes, you can have a, a full on um, scale swap without having to readjust anything on bearings. I mean, not bearings on washers, uh, just a classic modern classic knife. I love this knife and I haven't carried this in a while, but as summer is creeping in, I'm going to start carrying this again. I got a bunch of different scales, but I've really landed on this wing milled pattern on the burlap micarta all right last up in this list i bet you know what it is you might have your you might have your own thoughts on this but it's the ad20 by demco knives and then i will by extension say the the 20.5 uh manufactured in taiwan the production version smaller svelter production version of this knife but to me this one uh, is part of the new old guard. It's got the size. It's got the heft. It's overbuilt. It's but it's fidgety. I'm gonna use my right hand for a second here. It is just a joy to manipulate. On bearings, slaps in and out with the shark lock, which is now we're seeing on other well one other knife so far. There it is, Demco Wampum PA. Love the pivot on this sturdy as the day is long super sharp on thick stock great jimping incredible ergonomics deep carry well not deep carry i'm sorry full uh, uh what do you call it stamped pocket clip um, everything about this knife is is high speed low drag and just good to go i love it to me it fits in perfectly geez if i can hold it it fits in perfectly with these knives and yet it's a generation later so that's what we're talking about this is my definition of the new old guard old guard folders being robust and stylish and maybe even overbuilt we'll say but we'll just say robust and stylish uh these are the knives that i think are the new guard what do you think drop the comments in below down below let me know what you think the new guard knives are um and hopefully they're majority USA, because that's another part of this I didn't mention. Uh, if not, uh, there's only one one knife in this list. That's the React K2 that isn't at least designed in the United States. So check it out. All right. Uh, let me know in the comments below what you think uh, should have been on that list. Uh, also, on Sunday, check out episode 504 with Chaz Fisher, co-founder of Fisher Blade Company, uh, the man who designed the knife we will be giving away in our May Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway on Thursday Night Knives, May 16th. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer.
Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm-hmm.